So hello from my hospital room. This is going to be my vlog series about birth plans. And no, this is not how I planned to do my birth plan vlog episode and talk about birth plans, but it still fits the theme of what I was planning to say the whole time perfectly. Let me tell you why. A quick note from the future, it's six weeks later and I'm finally editing this episode. And I just wanted to say that it's a little rambly because I was up all night in labor before I recorded it and was a little giddy with happiness about being in labor. And finally that this is going to go up this week and at the end of the week my educational video will be on induction of labor which is a highly requested topic that has to do with birth plans so you'll see that educational video on friday finally this is not my birth story i will record my birth story and have that up at some other time this is just a reflection i felt like sharing when i was in labor so i hope you enjoy it I am admitted to the hospital at 35 weeks and I am in labor. My water broke last week. I've been in the hospital for several days and that was clearly unpredictable. It was not part of the plan to have an early baby go into labor early and break my water early. So the biggest thing I can say about birth plans is that they're not plans. I really prefer the term birth preferences, but even that it goes beyond just trying not to plan. My biggest piece of advice when I'm talking to patients and to my friends and family about their preferences for birth is that the biggest thing you can do to prepare for your birth is to keep flexibility in mind and prepare for things not being in your control or not going the way you wanted them to be because that is actually how birth goes. I'm still gonna tell you about things that I think are really important to talk about with your partner and your family and your provider regarding your birth preferences because you definitely get some very real preferences and choices, but not everything is a choice. So let's get started with things that aren't a choice. You could be like me and go into preterm labor early. You could get preeclampsia or another complication, and it could change how you envisioned your birth. It could change the timing when you envisioned your birth. It could change the way in which you tried to manage pain. It can change the way you're, who is in the room with you. It could change what you want out of your birth, and that's all okay. I like to back up a second and think, sometimes when we think about birth plans, we think about a very regimented way that labor will happen. I will go into labor, I will spend this much time at home, this is the time, this is my plan for pain control. But when something unexpected happens, it could really throw a wrench in something you had planned. So what I like to tell people is to really focus on all of the different things that could happen. The baby could be breached unexpectedly and you need a C-section. There could be a problem with the fetal heart rate and there's nothing you can do to control the fact that the fetal heart rate isn't conducive to a healthy vaginal birth and you need a C-section. So many people want their cervix to dilate, want their labor to go a certain speed, but you don't have control over these things that your body is doing in labor. The same way you don't have control about whether your hair grows out straight or curly. I could wish and wish and wish I had curly hair growing out of my head. I could do everything to prepare. I could move to a humid climate. I could do everything to try to put products in my hair. I could do everything to try to make my hair curly, but it won't grow out of my scalp curly because I want it to. And the same is true with how labor and the end of pregnancy can go. So once we realize that there are certain things that are within our control and preferences and other things that are not, I think that sets you up for success in terms of the birth plan or birth preferences, because there are some things you can control. So let's talk about those. All right, first thing you can control, who's in the room with you? Now we're still during a pandemic, so many hospitals have visitor policies where only one visitor is allowed or maybe a second. That's frustrating. But if you're watching this any other time in the future, or you may have considered free other birth, you can, you know that you can discuss who will be in the room with you. Now this is a discussion I recommend having pretty early, especially with your partner. Often there are underlying assumptions, especially, especially with mother figures about who will be present in the room. Um, and so it's really important to get on the same communication page so that there's not pressure on you right at the end of pregnancy or during the birth period about who will be in the room. The next thing that I recommend discussing is what you would like to do for pain control. So I have wonderful videos. I have a whole video on epidurals and I have a whole video on non-epidural pain control options. Give yourself the option to change your own mind if things feel different or go differently than you'd expect them to. I want you to really know that every single birth is awesome. Every woman is capable of having 
an unmedicated birth if they'd like to. We did it for centuries, but that doesn't mean it fits for you and it doesn't mean it has to. I have an epidural in my back right now and it was wonderful. I didn't really have a plan about pain control, to be honest. I was very open to an epidural and I just wanted to see how things felt. I have run several marathons in my life. I know that when I can put my mind to something, I can do it. But the reason I wanted to choose an epidural for my birth is because I wanted a calm experience that was pleasant and I didn't really want to be in severe pain during the birth. If you're different, that's great. I may feel different in another pregnancy, but for this pregnancy, I definitely wanted an uh, environment that was joyful and light and funny and didn't involve a lot of pain. Now, I may make a different choice in the future and you may make a different choice. I support everyone in what they wanna do because all pregnant people and birthing people, it's a beautiful moment no matter what. Okay, next thing that can be on your birth preference. You can set the mood a little, right? You can make a playlist. You can ask if your hospital lets you bring like essential oil diffusers or something to make the room smell good. You can talk to your friends and family about how you want, you know, do you want the lights on or off? Now, there may be medical indications to turn the lights on, but during your labor, you can kind of really set the mood and control kind of that space. You can tell your partner that you don't want to hear certain things. You can tell your nurse you don't want to be offered pain control control or you would like the least amount of cervical checks that your doctor or nurse recommends, etc. So you can really, what I like to do say is set the mood. The next list of things on my birth preference sheet that I see commonly, I actually love and truly are standard of care in the US for doctors like me and at every place I've worked and among my colleagues. But it's still really f important that you think about them and you go and talk to your doctor about them just to be extra sure that they're behind you with this as well. Those are things like delayed cord clamping. Skin to skin. Another thing I commonly see on birth plans is I don't want an episiotomy. And I'm like, good news, I almost never do episiotomies except in emergency situations. I think I do them in less than 1% of the births that I am a part of. The next thing is just operative delivery, things like a vacuum or maybe even forceps. Now, as an obstetrician, these are tools that I would only ever use if I really needed them and if I thought they were the safest thing for you and your baby. But you may wanna to talk to your doctor about like what those situations are and which of those things which device they would use. I use both devices, some doctors only use one. So talking with them about that would be really helpful and I think put you at ease. All right, so that was my really quick rundown about birth preferences. Why am I doing it in the hospital? Well, I just wanted to get this video out to you guys. It's way more casual than my other videos, but it is a vlog. I'm gonna do educational posts about all that other stuff. But yeah, my water broke at 34 weeks. It was very unexpected. I, you know, <laughs> It was a few days before Christmas and I, my first thought was another holiday in the hospital, another thing canceled in 2020, my Christmas, because it was gonna be in the hospital. I may get out in time, we'll see. But as shocking as it was and as uh, it continues to be a little surreal, the best thing that I think prepared me to handle this really unexpected bump in the road for both me my baby and my pregnancy was the fact that I know that birth can't be predicted and that being able to roll with the punches and being able to anticipate the unanticipated is something that will help with coping and enjoying the process. So that is what I'm going to try to do for the rest of my labor now that I've talked to you guys through some of my birth preferences. And yes, I'm gonna, my hospital does, and I'm gonna do delayed cord clamping and skin to skin as long as baby looks good. I know my doctor doesn't do episiotomies unless necessary. I know that she only does operative deliveries when they are necessary and in her best judgment, and I trust her to make that decision, the same with C-sections. Um, so I have a really trusting and loving relationship with my doctor and with my community here, and I've adjusted my expectations to know anything can kind of happen, and that's okay because I trust my medical team, and I am going to have, hopefully, a lovely birth. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to check out educational posts. Have a good day. Bye.